What is going on, everybody? Nathan King here with Auburn Undercover here on the War Eagle Wake Up. Welcome on in to uh, to Nashville, Tennessee. Bunch of games we're going on today. Hopefully, I'll get a better uh, a better backdrop for you guys tomorrow inside Bridgestone Arena. But uh, rolled on up here today to see who Auburn's next opponent is going to be on Friday, who they're going to open postseason play with. Of course, the South Carolina Gamecocks end up getting a win here on Thursday. They beat Arkansas 80 to 66. As the five seeds, they will play Auburn on Friday afternoon, approximately 2.30 central time there inside Bridgestone Arena. It depends on that first game. Um, Tennessee is going to play uh, is going to play Mississippi State in that first game. And so it's, they give about 25 minutes of uh, warm-up time to the next team. So, you know, 2.30, 2.45 in that game. Of course, Auburn, you know, any of the teams that they were going to match up against on Friday, they played really well during the regular season against, I think, the average margin of victory against – you know, four meetings against Arkansas, South Carolina, and Vanderbilt, their potential opponents for that game. I think it was like 83 to 51 or something like that. Of course, the biggest win for Auburn all season in terms of margin of victory um, was this game against South Carolina. You go back to Valentine's Day, ended up being the biggest margin of victory for Auburn over a ranked team in program history. Beat them 101 to 61, a 40-point win. And uh, you best believe that stuck, with, uh, that stuck with South Carolina. I went to the locker room afterwards and talked to some South Carolina players and, and BJ Mack said, look, this is what we wanted. We wanted an opportunity to get back at Auburn. Of course, they didn't play them again in the regular season. Um, so no shortage of, uh, of motivation there. Ja'Cory Wright told me that, uh, you know, he's, he, if he, he'll be sort of upset at his team if they can't find a reason to be, uh, to be motivated in this game because of what Auburn did to them in Neville Arena on Valentine's Day. Um, Lamont Paris, the South Carolina coach, talking after the game, after they beat Arkansas on Thursday, saying, look, it's just bad karma if Auburn goes out there and shoots like they did again. Because if you guys remember back on, on Valentine's Day, Auburn was 61% from the floor in that game, shot 60% from beyond the arc. It was easily their best offensive performance of the season, 12 of 20 from beyond the arc. And uh, Janai Broom and Jalen Williams in that game combined to shoot 9 of 12 um, from deep. And so you got to think that, uh, that Auburn is not going to replicate that exact performance tomorrow inside Bridgestone arena. But I mean, at the end of the day, if you're looking at this game, a 40 point win is a 40 point win. And so I still believe Auburn matches up well against the South Carolina team. It's still a team that likes to slow down the pace offensively and has been a really efficient defensive team, less than 71 points per game since that Auburn game. So they, they gave up 101 on the road and Auburn shot the lights out um, but since then, South Carolina has really tuned things up defensively, including today when they held Arkansas, who's a team that had gone on the road and scored a bunch of points against Alabama, a bunch of points against Kentucky. They held them down to 66 points. And that brings up another point that South Carolina players were talking about in the locker room after the game. You know, Auburn was so motivated and, and focused on getting this double bye. Um, you know, Dylan Cardwell, I thought, used a really good word. We talked about it on the last edition of, of War Eagle Wake Up. Um, saying the longevity of March, you know, a team's longevity is going to go a long way. And so the players were adamant. Bruce Pearl was adamant saying, look, one extra day does matter. One extra day when you're talking about, you know, the grind of March, even for a team with the depth that Auburn has, one extra day makes a difference of, of rest. Arkansas, or excuse me, South Carolina players, they kind of want to think the other way right now. You know, um, BJ Mack told me that, look, you look at how Arkansas looked. It was a close first half against South Carolina in this game. Um, they hadn't, they had played the previous day, Arkansas played the previous day. He said it took a little while for the rust to come off for South Carolina because they hadn't played since the regular season ended. Once it did, they obviously got rolling, but he said, we're going to try to use that to our advantage against Auburn tomorrow. Of course, Auburn did practice as we're recording this here on, uh, on Thursday night, Auburn did practice inside Bridgestone arena on Thursday. So they've been in the arena. Um, but you know, the, the rims were a little tight. Some players were saying, and, uh, you, you, it's hard to replicate the exact feel of a game. And uh, South Carolina is hoping they can use that to their advantage. All of this is to say that I would, definitely wouldn't expect a uh, a 40-point Auburn win again. Again, the Tigers do match up well against the Gamecocks in a lot of, uh, of different ways. And look, Auburn was there. Auburn's coaches were there actually right in front of us on uh, on media row courtside as Bruce Pearl, Stephen Pearl, Chad Pruitt, and Corey Williams spent the entire game. Bruce left at halftime. Um, but the rest of that, that assistant group spent the entire game scouting Basically, once it looked like South Carolina was was going to cruise to a win with the dominant second half, of course they shifted their focus to the Gamecocks. But so you know, it's it's not it's not a complete advantage for South Carolina to have already played. And of course, Auburn hopes that it's an advantage that uh, that they've had some time to rest. And so, 
Should be a good matchup, though I would be surprised if it's not much closer than uh, than last time. That pace of play, of course, is something to monitor. Again, South Carolina still is in like the bottom 20s, bottom 30s in the country in terms of tempo. So it's difficult for them to climb out of holes sometimes. And Auburn obviously wants to speed you up, wants to speed you up on offense, um, you know, wants to use their defense to, to get you a little bit out of your comfort zone. And obviously they want to run in transition. Auburn is, you know, thinks it's a much better team when it, when it pushes the ball, whereas South Carolina wants to stay in the half court. One thing I did want to make a note of, though, before you guys watch this game, you know, you're, watch, you're watching this here on Friday morning, before you watch the game later in the day, this officiating crew in, in Nashville, assuming they stay true to what happened here on Thursday, are not calling much. It is a true neutral site tournament environment in terms of an officiating crew, more so than I have seen at a lot of different places. Um, I mean, there were we were we were leaving the arena when Texas A&M and Ellis or excuse me, Texas A&M and Ole Miss got got started and Wade Taylor got like hip checked near the three point line. Just somebody bumping straight into him. Didn't call that touch fouls, not calling it. Um, I would be shocked if many over the backs are called in this SEC tournament, letting guys go for rebounds. This is this is a game of physicality. I mean, they, they are going the more physical teams in this setting are going to be at an advantage. And Bruce Pearl talked about that this week. He said, look, what are our two um, keys to playing well in the postseason? He said, continue to play unselfish. Of course, Auburn's assist to turnover ratio has been really good all season and then be the more physical team. And, you know, of course, both of those things are easier said than done, but Auburn has done the first one really well all season. Um, physicality, there has been times where uh, where teams have been able to bump them around um, just a little bit and, uh, and their rebounding has lacked a little bit, but obviously they've been, for the most part this season, uh, one of the better teams in the league in that area because you've got what could be the best front court in the SEC in Jalen Williams and Jani Broom. And so um, it'll be interesting to see, you know, Auburn's coaches, I was just thinking about it while I was watching that, watching Bruce Pearl in front of us, watching Stephen Pearl and the assistants in front of us kind of react to the different calls. There were a couple calls where Bruce is kind of like wondering why they didn't call it, um, but that's important. That's why you do it. Bruce told us earlier this week, he said, this is the only time it's actually legal in the NCAA rules to uh, to scout an opponent in person because you're on the tournament venue and they understand that you can just go do that if you want to. And so it is actually within the rules. And so that's an important element of it too. And now Bruce Pearl and his staff are going to go back and communicate to the players and say, look, this is, you're going to get be able to get away with a lot of stuff in terms of playing physical defense um, and in terms of going to the rim. You know, I think about somebody like a Katie Johnson that thrives off of that so much. Um, you're not going to get the calls you usually get. And so a bit of a tangent there, but I just wanted to kind of share my observation of that today um, should be a really good one. Of course, if Auburn does win this game, they get Tennessee at the top of the bracket. Tennessee is the top seed. Um, like I said, they are going to play Mississippi state later on today, or uh, excuse me, they'll play them the first game tomorrow. And so Auburn gets an opportunity for revenge if they're able to take care of South Carolina. South Carolina is very re revenge-minded in this game. I would expect Auburn to have a, a fan advantage here. Um, weren't a ton of South Carolina fans. I think Arkansas fans probably outnumbered them um, in this game, but you never know because Kentucky and Tennessee fans, they buy up a bunch of tickets. I mean, obviously like 90% of the arena is just their fans. Um, every every year this uh, this week, they they tend to do that at Bridgestone Arena. They might be looking to root against Auburn because obviously Auburn's got you know kind of a mini rivalry with uh, with each of those teams, and so it should be really interesting. Should be a great matchup um, tomorrow in Bridgestone Arena. I want to just make sure really quickly, um, you guys can check out now if you want to. But I uh, I mentioned I think I said Jacory Wright, um, Jacoby Wright. I want to make sure I got that name uh, correct. The South Carolina guard. Um, that I mentioned earlier. So thank you guys so much for tuning in to the, uh, the War Eagle Wake Up here at Auburn Undercover. I am Nathan King. Go head over to auburnundercover.com. Going to have lots of coverage. You can go read my VIP story from today um, where I went, went to the locker room, got some thoughts from the South Carolina players on this matchup. And, of course, we're going to have all kinds of coverage tomorrow, and uh, we'll see if Auburn's able to make a, uh, make a trip of it here in Nashville. You know, they haven't won a game. It's crazy. You know, they haven't won a game since they hoisted that trophy after beating Tennessee. They have not won a game at the SEC tournament. Of course, you had – the COVID cancellation, and then you had the postseason ban, um, but they've been one and done the two times since then. Of course, the Jabari, uh, the Jabari Smith Walker Kessler team lost to Texas A&M last year. They lost the first game to Arkansas, and so Auburn's looking to Auburn is looking to avoid three straight SEC tournament losses. It's just kind of crazy to think about, you know, with with the way the circumstances have gone for this team um, that they haven't won a game in the SEC tournament since since I was a junior in college since 2019, and so uh, they're looking to reverse that tomorrow against a team they beat by 40 during the season, but obviously they expect a much closer game tomorrow on a neutral floor, and it would be a quad one win. That's one more thing for Auburn. You know, they're looking to kind of get on that four line 
for the NCAA tournament, this would be a quad one win because it's on the neutral floor. So it's valued a little bit higher as opposed to when Auburn beat Carolina in Neville Arena. That's not viewed as a quad one win because they kind of consider that a little bit easier because it's on your home floor. Then you get a shot at Tennessee. Tennessee's trying to be a one seed in the NCAA or in the NCAA tournament. They're the top seed in, in Nashville, but they're also looking to be a one seed in the NCAA tournament. So that would be a huge win for your resume as Auburn is, uh, is trying to get up to that four line. They may be on it depending on who you look at. Um, I talked to Jerry Palm, the the CBS Sports bracketologist. He is one of the few that has Auburn as a five, but his logic is pretty sound. He said, you know, there aren't many teams when you look at the recent history of college basketball that have only had one quad one win like Auburn has right now and have been seeded higher than five. And so um, the conference tournaments sometimes don't matter a lot to certain teams, but Auburn is in a position where it matters to them. Because if you go from one quad one win, let's say you win two games here, you're going from one to three. That definitely was a meaningful trip to a, to a conference tournament. It's very meaningful for Auburn's NCAA tournament resume. So we'll see starting tomorrow inside Bridgestone Arena. Definitely excited for some postseason basketball to get underway. I'm Nathan King. Go head over to AuburnUndercover.com. Y'all, thanks for tuning in today.